Okay, next let's talk about the clinical workflow. <clears throat> so now, as we've been discussing throughout our <clears throat> videos thus far, <clears throat> excuse me, we have, um, we've, we've, we've talked about, we've gone over, we've discussed, uh, mentioned the clinical workflow. Um, and here we're going to go into some, some, uh, some more detail about that uh, here in, in a, the next couple of slides. So what we have here first, let's look in this first example. We have a clinical radiology uh, workflow at an imaging center. Okay, so let's say, so Jane, so what we have here, first step is um, Jane visits her PCP uh, because of back pain. So she goes to her PCP office, her PCP orders, her PCP orders Jane to have an MRI performed. So then at that time, the, uh, the PCP contacts the imaging center to schedule an, M an MRI for Jane. Now, the next step is if we, if we go down to the, to the second, uh, second row here. So Jane's demographics are enter into risk, right? And her appointment is scheduled. And her, and her appointment is scheduled. Uh, the day of, uh, so, and that could be done at um, any time by the, by the, um, could be done by the imaging center. You know, they send, you know, they call um, the, the, the uh, imaging, you know, they call it, they, excuse me, the, the PCP office, the primary, primary care physician office could uh, most likely, you know, call the imaging center or fax the information so Jane's demographics can be entered into us. So at, the, so at the day of Jane's appointment, the MRI modality uh, retrieves her demographics from risk via a modality work list, which is via HL7. So here's another um, um, step here, um, and uh, another item that um, here that's called modality work list. So a modality work list is, is just pretty much a work list um, uh, it's a pretty much a um, work list that holds um, information about exams, patients' exams for maybe a day, for that day. Let's just say for that day or two days, but most typically for the next 24 hours. It's a work list that holds their basic information, you know, first name, last name, most likely date of birth, um, patient ID, age, things of that nature, so that they get from the wrist and um, that, th that they can get from the wrist um, so that the modality is able to, when, uh, when the technician scans, uh, performs the MRI scan on the patient, uh, they're able to tie those actual physical images that they took to the demographics Based on the modality work list, so they so they'll pull. So typically, when um, when a technician when they're at their they're at their scanner they're at their, they're at their station, um, you know when the patient when they before the patient uh, gets their scan, you know maybe they're at the front desk um, waiting to be called in to have their procedure performed. A technician will have at their screen at the station. They'll have a list. Um, they're, they're able to access the modality work list from their station, where she will show the list of uh, exams uh, and patients with you know, exams for that day. So they're able to find the correct patient from the list. They select the, they, they select the patient. And then at that point, um, uh, they're, then they'll have, they have the patient information available on the screen, so then, uh, then they'll call the patient back into the room, uh, prepare the patient for the exam, 
And then at that point, um, uh, just hang on for one second. I'm sorry. Let me see. And then at that point, um, the patient is uh, uh, brought back into the room. They, you know, um, prepare for the scanner. The, uh, the technician will prepare the patient for their exam, put them in position on the scanner where they need to be. And then at that point, the, the technician is able to perform their scan, which will, uh, um, and now since they have the, the patient's demographics pulled up, information, they're able to tie the actual images to the uh, patient's demographics. So when that's done, that's what the modality work list is for. Um, modality work list, you know, can be a risk, can have a modality work list, can, can provide a modality work list. A, um, a PACS can provide a um, modality work list. So different medical uh, devices are able to perform modality work lists. And you, and, you want to have a, uh, and you want to have a modality work list because if you didn't, let's say if modality work lists are not available, isn't available at this um, imaging center for some reason, then what has to happen is the technician would have to manually type in the patient's uh, demographics for that exam. They'll type, you know, they'll have to manually type in first name, last name, um, maybe a uh, uh, date of birth, uh, maybe age, social security number, maybe patient ID. So, and what happens is without the modality work list, that can lead to a, a manual, you know, when, you, when you're dealing with manual, manual steps, manual intervention, that may lead to manual errors, you know, um, misspellings. So, uh, so this is why modality work lists are so one of the reasons why they're so beneficial, because or or, or maybe the you know errors the technician may type in the wrong patient's name. So this is the reason why. One of the reasons why modality work lists are so useful, because you're able to um, uh, you're able to cut out certain possible uh, typographical errors. And this is done. The modality work list is um, uh, is provided via H uh, via HL seven. So that's also another uh, part me. It's also another benefit of um, or another uh, form of implementation that's that's handled by HL seven. So we're here at the modality. Okay, so we have um, boom, every, the patients in place. Okay, Jane Jane arrives and her MRI is performed. And at that point, the modality will send the images to PAX via DICOM. So now we have DICOM in play because we have, we have the actual uh, images, uh, digital images. So they need to be uh, sent to PAX. So they're sent via DICOM. All right, now we go down to the next step. So on a workstation, the radiologist displays Jane's images from PAX interprets them and provides the and provides their diagnosis into a report. Um, and so that, that that step is uh um you know that's 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 a pretty pretty common pretty common step and then at then after the fact the report can be the report can be sent back to risk via HO seven. So maybe the the so maybe the uh, the risks want, uh, need to report, um, so the report uh, can be stored. You know, it's created in packs, perhaps it's stored in packs, and then it can all be also be sent to risk. You know, via HL seven, uh, and then uh, at that point, the risk is sent back to the primary care physician via the web. Can be sent back via the web or fax or that whatever methods that they use. And the PCP shares uh, the results with Jane. So this is a typical. This is a typical can be a typical standard uh, workflow, uh, radiology workflow at an imaging center. Um, I have, uh, you know, definitely worked. Uh, you know, having been in the imaging center for a number of years, I've seen this workflow. Uh, um, 
played out numerous of times, and that is a workflow for a uh, uh, for a uh, imaging center. Thank you.